Maccabeam Shani, 2 Maccabees 12. When these covenants were made, Lysias went unto the king, and the Yahudim were about their husbandry. But of the governors of several places, Timotheus and Apollonius, rather Apollonius, the son of Gineas, also Hieronymus, rather, also Hieronymus, rather Hieron. Imus and Dimophon, and beside them Nicanor, the governor of Cyprus, would not suffer them to be quiet and live in peace. The men of Yafo also did such a wicked deed. They prayed the Yahudim that dwelt among them to go with their women and children into the boats which they had prepared, as though they had meant to them no hurt, who accepted of it according to the common decree of the city as being desirous to live in peace, and suspecting nothing. But when they were gone forth into the deep, they drowned no less than two hundred of them. When Yahuda heard of this cruelty done unto the, his countrymen, he commanded those that were with him to make them ready. And calling upon Elohim, the righteous judge, he came again, those murderers, rather, came he... He came against those murderers of his brethren and burnt the haven by night and set the boats on fire, and those that fled thither he slew. And when the town was shut up, he went backward, as if he would return to root out all of them of the city of Yafo. But when he heard that the Yamanim were minded to do in like manner unto the Yahudim that dwelt among them, he came upon the Yamanim also by night, and set fire on the haven and the navy, so that the light of the fire was seen at Yerushalayim, two hundred and forty stadion off. Now when they were gone from thence, nine stadion in their journey toward Timotheus, rather, Timotheus, rather, Timotheus, no fewer than five thousand men on foot and five hundred horsemen of the Aravim set upon him. Whereupon there was a very sore battle, but Yahudah's side, by the help of Elohim, got the victory, so that the nomads of Arabia, being overcome, besought Yahudah for peace, promising both to give him cattle and to pleasure him otherwise. Then Yahudah, thinking indeed that they would be profitable in many things, granted them peace, whereupon they shook hands, and so they departed to their tents. Yahuda went also about to make a bridge to a certain strong city, which was fenced about with walls, and inhabited by people of diverse countries, and the name of it was Caspis. But they that were within it put such trust in the strength of the walls, and provision of victuals, that they behaved themselves rudely toward them that were with Yahuda, railing and blaspheming, rather blaspheming and uttering such words as were not to be spoken. Wherefore Yahuda with his company, calling upon the great Yahuwah of the world, who without rams or engines or war did cast down Yericho in the time of Yahusha, gave a fierce assault against the walls and took the city by the will of Elohim and made unspeakable slaughters, so much so that a lake two stadion broad near adjoining thereunto, being filled full, was seen running with blood. Then departed they from thence seven hundred and fifty stadion, and came to Charaka, unto the Yahudim, that are called men of Toviyahu. But as for Timotheus, they found him not in the places for before he had dispatched anything, he departed from thence, having left a very strong garrison in a certain hold. Howbeit, Dastheus and Sosipater, who were of Yahuda Maccabees' captains, went forth and slew those that Timotheus had left in the fortress, above ten thousand men. And Yahuda Maccabee ranged his army by bands, and set them over the bands, and went against Timotheus, who had about him a hundred and twenty thousand men of foot, 
and two thousand and five hundred horsemen. Now, when Timotheus had knowledge of Yahudah's coming, he sent the women and children and the other baggage unto a fortress called Carnion, for the town was hard to besiege and uneasy to come unto by reason of the straightness of all the places. But when Yahudah, his first band, came in sight, the enemies, being smitten with fear and terror, through the appearing of him who sees all things, fled amain, one running into this way, another that way, so as that they were often hurt of their own men and wounded with the points of their own swords. Yahudah also was very earnest in pursuing them, killing those wicked wretches of whom he slew about thirty thousand men. Moreover, Timotheus himself fell into the hands of Dasithius, rather, Dasithius, and Sosipater, whom he besought with much craft to let him go with his life, because he had many of the Yahudim's parents and the brethren of some of them, who, if they put him to death, should not be regarded. So, when he had assured them with many words that he would restore them without hurt, according to the agreement, they let him go for the saving of their brethren. Then Yahudah, rather, then Yahudah Maccabee marched forth to Carnion, and to the cat, rather, to the temple of Atargotis, and there he slew five and twenty thousand persons. And after he had put to flight and destroyed them, Yahudah removed the host toward Ephron, rather Ephron, a strong city, wherein Lysias abode, and a great multitude of diverse nations, and the strong young men kept the walls and defended them mightily, wherein also was great provision of engines and spears. But when Yahudah and his company had called upon Elelian, who with his power breaks the strength of his enemies, they won the city and slew twenty and five thousand of them that were within. From thence they departed to Scythopolis, which lies six hundred stadion from Yerushalayim, rather Yerushalayim. But when the Yahudim that dwelt there had testified that the Scythopolitians, rather Scythopolitians, dealt lovingly with them and treated them kindly in the time of their adversity. They gave them thanks, desiring them to be friendly still unto them. And so they came to Yerushalayim, the feast of the weeks approaching. And after the feast, called Shavuot, they went forth against Gorgias, the governor of Edom, who came out with three thousand men of foot and four hundred horsemen. And it happened that in their fighting together a few of the Yahudim were slain, at which time Dasithius, one of Baxinor's company, who was on horseback and a strong man, was still upon Gorgias, and taking hold of his coat, drew him by force. And when he would have taken that cursed man alive, a horseman of Thracia, coming upon him, smote off his shoulder, so that Gorgias fled unto Marisa. Now, when they that were with Gorgias had fought long and were weary, Yahudah called upon Yahuwah that he would show himself to be their helper and leader of the battle. And with that he began in his own language and sung psalms with a loud voice, and rushing unawares upon Gorgias' men, he put them to flight. So Yahudah gathered his host and came into the city of Adalam. And when the seventh day came, they purified themselves, as the custom was, and kept the Shabbat in the same place. And upon the day following, as the use had been, Yahudah and his company came to take up the bodies of them that were slain, and to bury them with their kinsmen in their father's graves. Now, under the coats of every one that was slain, they found things consecrated to the idols of the Yamanim, which is forbidden the Yahudim by the Torah. Then every man saw that this was the cause wherefore they were slain, all men therefore praising Yahweh, the righteous judge, who had opened the things that were hid. 
betook themselves unto prayer and besought him that the sin committed might wholly be put out of remembrance. Besides, that noble Yahuda exhorted the people to guard themselves from sin. For so much as they slew before their eyes the things that came to pass for the sins of those that were slain. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company to the sum of two thousand drachmas of silver, he sent it to Yerushalayim to offer a sin offering, doing therein very well and honestly, and that he was mindful of the resurrection. For if he had not hoped that they that were slain would rather should have risen again. It had been superfluous and vain to pray for the dead. And also in that perceive, rather he perceived that there was great favor laid up for those that died in righteousness. It was a holy and good thought. Whereupon he made a reconciliation for the dead, that they might be delivered from sin.